Okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna add on our three dimension. So when you guys move towards your project and this is what's expected, okay? All of your letters have to interact with each other. So you have to show underlapping and overlapping. You also have to show letter manipulation. So, or an interesting font is what I'm gonna call it on the rubric. If you give me just block letters, that's not gonna be enough, okay? You're not gonna score very high. This is okay, all right? So you've done some. You also are expected to show three dimension. You're gonna have to use quite a bit of critical thinking to figure out how to do three dimension. So this is where we're practicing that. So you have to make two decisions to begin with. Okay, you have to decide, do you wanna see the letters from the top or do you wanna see them from the bottom? So you pick one of those. Then you have to decide, do you wanna see the 3D coming from the left or do you wanna see the 3D coming in from the right? Okay, so for this project or for this worksheet, we're going to choose bottom and to the left. Okay, so if we were to like set up a one point perspective basically, that means like our dot would be down here somewhere. Okay, so making those decisions on do you wanna see it from the top or the bottom and then left and right, you're basically just making a decision where would that line, where would that dot go? And then technically all my diagonals would kind of follow that dot. We're not gonna get that technical with it. We're just gonna use that as a guide, okay? Then Basically, anytime you have a corner, whether it be an Audi like these or an any like this one, you're gonna put your diagonal lines going from there, okay? And your diagonal lines that go to this dot, they are all gonna go in the same direction, okay? Now, the critical thinking part that I'm talking about, sometimes your letter is going to cover up where a diagonal should go, and that means that it doesn't go there. And I will refer to that as we go through this. So let's just go ahead and start up here at this top corner, okay? So we're gonna make our diagonal going down and to the left. And then we're just gonna go to the next corner. That is also down to the left. And then we're just gonna close that up. So we're making like a series of boxes <laughs> all the way through basically. So this line matches that line. So if you guys, when you, after you put in your diagonals, if you're confused on which way do you, you go, like which way would this line go, look at the one that's right in front of it and you match it so you make parallels. Does that make sense to everybody? Good, okay. All right, we're gonna go to this little any corner right here and we're gonna put in a diagonal like that. And then off of that diagonal, we're gonna go cut, we're gonna mimic this line. So not technically straight down, but fairly close. So we're gonna mimic that. Okay, so we made this line and then we just kind of connected it out here. So we're mimicking this one. And then this little empty space up here, we need to make a parallel line to this. So then that one goes and connects to there. You guys see that? So we made our diagonal here and then we ended, made that side there that matches that. And then we put this in, that matches the angle of that line. Okay, you got it close. Okay, I'll check on it in a little bit. Okay, now let's move down. We don't do anything up here off of this line because it's above our viewpoint, okay? So we're gonna jump down to this next corner here and that's gonna be a down and to the left. And then the one right after that, that's down and to the left. They're the same. Then we need to follow this, make a parallel line to this one. So you guys will notice if you don't get it kind of exact, then they start looking a little funky, a little wonky. All right, we're gonna jump down to this little any corner right there and that's gonna have one coming out that way. And then we're just gonna go straight across to the left and connect it out like that. We're gonna jump down to this very bottom corner 
And this one we're gonna have to make a little bit more angled than we have been so that we can get a good connection right here. So I'm gonna draw a little more like that. It's still kind of going down to the left, sort of. And then we need to mimic this curve to close that off. So kind of right there. So the reason that this diagonal changed a little bit is because the leg itself is kind of trying to change directions. Okay, bottom corner down here <clears throat> on the left hand leg, got a diagonal and then we're gonna close that up. Just a like that. Okay, so on the left hand side of this A, all of that 3D is complete. Okay, so now we just have to do this side and then the inner part. So let's go ahead and just start at the base of this leg. So we're gonna put our diagonals in that way. And just kind of cap it off. So if you guys haven't noticed yet, it, making stuff 3D is basically, you're just kind of doing a series of boxes, basically. Okay, we're gonna jump up to this any corner right here, and that is gonna have a diagonal in there. From the bottom of that little diagonal, the first line we can make is going straight across to the left. So we're mimicking, we're making a parallel line to this middle part right there. All right. And then last one is making a parallel line to this one. So I've got just a little bit of a curve in there. So I'm gonna try and curve that one just a touch. All right, and then last part is here in the middle. We don't have any corners technically where we're gonna have um, that any coming out from. So all we have to do is just mimic this curve by placing it in there like that. All right, yay, we've got it 3D. Okay, I'm gonna move a little faster in the R and the T, okay? So I spent a long time on the A, so I'm gonna work faster on these, all right? So I'm gonna start on the R, and I'm gonna go ahead and start kinda coming out from this corner here. So I'm gonna make my diagonal, and then I'm gonna jump down to this bottom corner, I'm gonna make my diagonal, and then put my straight in. I'm gonna complete out that box. I can see the A through it right now. I don't want to see that. I want the 3D to be complete. So I'm going to erase that out. Technically, we've got a little bit of an issue right here. If you wanted to, you could come up from here and let that, let some 3D kind of just fade or disappear behind there. Your choice, or you could even take this out and just let that whole section just kind of be your 3D. So you can choose if you want your diagonal there, you can do that way, or you can have it represented like this because it's kind of going around a curve. Either one will work. All right, I'm gonna come down to this next corner over here. That's a down to the left, and then I'm gonna close up the box. So a lot of this is just make a diagonal, close up the box. Make your diagonal, close up the box. I'm gonna jump to this corner over here on the opposite leg. I'm gonna have that go down to the left and then it's just gonna connect in with the 3D part that we just made here. And I'm gonna kind of curve that a little bit. All right, so just like here, this section in the A, we're gonna have that in the R as well. So we're gonna come out of that any corner, and then we can go straight horizontal to the left, and just let it connect in right in there with that leg. And I'm gonna go back to this point, and I'm gonna go down into the left diagonal there to mimic that leg. Do what? Looks better, that's good. Okay, last part is this inner part, and it's a little odd, 
okay? So the only part that we're gonna see three-dimensional three-dimensionally in this little like teardrop shape is this kind of we're gonna make a little upper shelf there. So it just all you're doing is just kind of mimicking this curve just a little bit lower down. So it's gonna look like that. Okay. All right, let's bust out the T. Okay, we are going to start at this top corner with diagonal down to the left, and then this top part of the T blocks anything else out, so we're just gonna go straight down with that, and that, that part's done. So then I'm gonna go to the next corner, so if you guys kinda see a pattern here, corner, diagonal, close the box. Corner, diagonal, close the box, so on and so forth. So we're at this corner, down and to the left, down to the left, close the box. Next corner down here, down and to the left, close up the box. All right, we have an any corner. So we're gonna have a diagonal showing up from there. And then we can just go ahead and make our straight across horizontal, connect those two. Then I'm gonna jump down to this point and I'm gonna go ahead and make my diagonal there and then draw my straight line down. Okay. All right, the last place that we're gonna put something in is right here off of this corner. So that's gonna go down and to the left and that is going to go over there. Now, let me make a comment. As we have been working on this, we've done all of our three dimension where you see it coming from the left hand side. Does everybody see that? Okay, so we haven't done any work on the right hand side of any part until right here. Now the reason why we're doing it here is because technically the T, like that is not blocked by anything, regardless on side. We're seeing it from the underneath. Okay, so that's why we put that one in there because we can still see that portion from the underneath side. This part, we don't have anything directly underneath because this changes direction and kind of blocks that view. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So here are your directions on how I want you to complete this worksheet. For this part, I want you to outline it with your Sharpie. Do not fill it in with your Sharpie and do not fill it in with your pencil. Just outline it. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop moving. Let me give you all of your directions and then you can go. Outline only, no shading, no filling in with your permanent marker. Down here. You have to select five different fonts with five different letters. So let me reword that a little better. Choose five different letters and they all have to be five different fonts. They also all have to show three dimension. Let me show you where your resources are. So if you go into Canvas, let me switch over to student view. You guys are here where the videos go as I create them. You guys are gonna go to 4.04 .04 today. I've got two different options for you. I have an embedded Google Doc where you can scroll down and scroll over and they give you a full alphabet. Some of them kinda have 3D or some of them fully have 3D. Some of them do not. Okay, you have to show three dimensions. So on some of these, you're gonna have to use critical thinking because if you like that font for how it is, great, but you have to add in three dimension. So you have this option or you guys see this link? Everybody see that? Okay, you can click on that. I already have it set to graffiti so you don't have to worry about changing it. You can choose how many fonts you wanna see at a time and then you just kind of scroll through there and look for like, this one's 
kind of cool. So you guys can go through. Now notice, some of them have some three dimension, some of them do not. So if you go through here and you find one that you like, you can click on it and then it'll give you the full alphabet, okay? Outline in Sharpie, do not fill it in with Sharpie, do not shade with pencil. Five different letters, five different fonts, all 3D, you do not have to outline in Sharpie if you do not want to. If you want to shade down here with your pencil or fill in with your Sharpie, you can do it down here, but just not up here. Charlie, what's your question? Do we still outline with, in Sharpie the first time outside of the box? Yes. Okay. Yep. Do you want us to outline in the five boxes when we download it? You do not have to if you don't want to. If you don't want to. So the only one that I want to see outlined in Sharpie is the middle part. Okay, that's it, guys.